Well, now we're um, near the end of the program, and the last part is to have closing statements by each of the candidates. And since um, Ms. Carr started with the opening statement, Jeff will, Rosen will give the first closing statement. And you'll each have two minutes. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. I was talking about a week ago with a venture capitalist to uh, encourage him to contribute to my campaign. And he said, what's your big idea? What's your big idea? I think this is how these guys talk. <laughs> and I said, my big idea is an old idea, ethics and integrity in the criminal justice system. And that's what I'm running to restore. One of the things that I've uh, tried to, one of the pledges that I've made is that when I'm the district attorney, uh, I will not begin fundraising until at the earliest a year before the election. Now, why is that important? Because let's have at least three years of the district attorney focused full time on doing the people's business. This district attorney was raising money continuously from the day she was elected into office. And the problem with that is that it splits your focus from focusing on the important work of the district attorney. And it also makes doing favors for campaign contributors a lot more tempting. You see, this is a district attorney that said to you, on the one hand, I don't want to be present when my lawyers are discussing whether or not to seek the death penalty, as though they can't speak freely in front of the district attorney, which is apparently what she thinks. And so she doesn't want to be involved in that. But when a wealthy campaign contributor calls her on a theft case, remember we have 45,000 cases a year, the case that the district attorney chooses to get involved in and, and follow up and make phone calls just happens to be the case of a wealthy campaign contributor. Let's just call it what it is and what everyone knows. It's a favor for a campaign contributor. So I would encourage uh, the district attorney, Ms. Carr, uh, to sign the pledge that I have signed myself, and I'm going to commit myself to this, whether or not she does, to not begin raising money until at the earliest a year before the election, and also not to raise money from different people after the election that you don't know about. So Ms. Carr loaned herself over $50,000 in the last election and then had new and different contributors pay that off after the election, which you didn't know about. Thank you again for being here tonight. My opponent has said a number of things that are inaccurate or distorted, and I really ask you, before you make the important decision to vote, to take a look at my website, DoloresCarr.com. Look at the uh, part that says setting the record straight, and you'll see uh, the truth there. I'm proud of the record that I have. I was a judge for six years. I had a sterling reputation as a deputy district attorney and as a judge. But there's only one candidate up here tonight who's been criticized by the Court of Appeal for committing prosecutorial misconduct during the course of a trial, and that's my opponent. But you don't hear him say that. Now is not the time to learn how to be the DA on the job. My opponent is like a police officer. He uh, goes out in his car and he makes arrests and he writes his report and he does a good job. Goes to court and testifies. He now goes in and says, I'm ready to be the chief of police. Well, I suggest to you that with the issues that we have coming down in the future, more budget cuts, medicinal or medical marijuana dispensaries opening up in our communities, we have early releases from prison with people getting out of prison with no parole supervision. Uh, we have a lot of challenges ahead of us, and what we really need to have is someone who is experienced and who has shown the leadership. And one of the ways I've done that is to make sure uh, that we have a fair hearing in court. I took an oath of office because I'm the DA who represents each and every one of you who live in Santa Clara County. And if I see that there is a judge who is not giving us a fair hearing, us being the people, the attorneys who are representing victims of crime, how many cases of yours am I going to lose before I stand up and take a tough position, even though it subjects me to criticism uh, by the newspaper or by my opponent? But what I am going to do is I'm going to stand up for victims. I'm going to use the tools of the law that allow me to uh, make those tough decisions. And I pledge to you I'm going to continue to do that to make sure you are safe. Well, I'd like to thank our two candidates for um, being willing to come tonight and answer these very tough questions. It's very kind of you, and it's a real important part of the civic process. 
um, on behalf of the League of Women Vote, I'm, I'm, I'm thanking you not just as myself, but on behalf of the Los Altos Mountain View League of Women Voters, the Palo Alto League of Women Voters, the American um, Association of University Women, KMTV, uh, the Los Altos Library, and the Mid Peninsula Media Center. We really appreciate your time, and we also appreciate your being willing to um, take part in public service and run. It's a lot of effort.